the U.S. has tested a new ground launch cruise missile. Department of Defense announced on Monday that the test was successful. The test was conducted from San Nicolas Island, California. It's important to note that the missile test would not have been permitted under the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces or INF treaty. The test was possible since the United States abandoned conformity to the treaty as of the 2nd of August 2019. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes U.S. testing new land-based cruise missile after it withdrew from the INF treaty. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer All Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. The INF Treaty was signed by Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev in 1987. It banned ground launch missiles with ranges from 500 km to 5,500 km. That's 310 to 3,420 miles. The INF Treaty eliminated around 2,700 nuclear and conventional missiles as well as their launchers. This was achieved by May 1991. This included short-range missile with 310 to 620 miles, that's 500 to 1,000 km range, and intermediate-range missile with 620 to 3,420 miles, that's 1,000 to 5,500 km range. The treaty had provisions for 10 years of on-site inspections. INF Treaty went a long way in ending the serious standoff between U.S. Pershing and cruise missiles and Soviet SS-20 missiles in Europe. It should be noted that the treaty does not cover sea-launched missiles. There were two main factors that resulted in the U.S. abandoning the treaty, which we'll now look into one by one. On November 29, 2017, speaking at the Wilson Center, National Security Council official Christopher Ford had revealed that the weapon violating the INF Treaty was the Novator 9M729, having NATO designation SSC-8. This newly developed missile is reported to be derived from 3M14 caliber NK land-based cruise missile and probably uses some design elements of KH-101 air-launched cruise missile. There's limited information on the missile, but it's expected to use transport erector launcher. The missile is thought to be guided by inertial navigation system. As per the United States, Novator 9M729 is land-based and has a range between 500 km to 5,500 km. That's 310 to 3,420 miles, depending on fuel load and warhead use. This makes the missile violate the terms of the INF Treaty. The 9M729 is capable of hitting targets throughout Western Europe with tactical nuclear warheads in the event of a conflict. In December 2017, the U.S. government had sanctioned several companies involved in the production of 9M729, including lead contractor Novator. In February 2018, the Pentagon concluded that Russia was actively violating the terms of the agreements. In October last year, President Trump claimed the agreement did little more than interfere with U.S. military development. The President had said at a Nevada rally, I don't know why President Barack Obama didn't negotiate or pull out. We're not going to let them violate a nuclear agreement and go out and do weapons and we're not allowed to. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg concurred with Trump's assessment. He stated, After years of denials, Russia recently acknowledged the existence of a new missile system, called 9M729. 
Russia has not provided any credible answers on this new missile. All allies agree that the most plausible assessment would be that Russia is in violation of the treaty. The INF Treaty already had much opposition in America's power circle. This is not only because of the Russian aspect, but also due to the Chinese factor. Harry Harris, the former commander of U.S. Pacific Command, who is now U.S. Ambassador to South Korea, is one of them. In testimony submitted to Congress last year, Harris pointed to several important aspects. He noted that China is not a signatory of any treaty like this and used it to develop a large arsenal of missiles. As per him, the Chinese rocket forces have more than 2,000 ballistic and cruise missiles, almost 95 percent of which would violate the INF Treaty if China was a signator. The Pentagon stated that the U.S. military successfully tested a conventionally configured ground-launched cruise missile at San Nicolas Island, California. The specific branch of the military which conducted the test was not disclosed. The Department of Defense said in a statement on Monday, adding that data collected and lessons learned from this test will inform the Department of Defense's development of future intermediate range capabilities. The department said the missile accurately impacted its target after more than 500 kilometers, 311 miles of flight. As per reports, the missile was launched from Mark 41 vertical launch system. It's to be noted that the same launcher is used in the Aegis missile defense system. The Aegis ballistic missile defense system or Aegis BMD is a United States Department of Defense missile defense agency program developed to provide missile defense against short to intermediate range ballistic missiles. It's part of the United States national missile defense strategy. Aegis BMD, also known as sea-based mid-course, is designed to intercept ballistic missiles post-boost phase and prior to re-entry. The Aegis combat system forms a critical component of the Ticonderoga and Arleigh Burke warships. Aegis Ashore is the land-based component. Both the land and sea-based Aegis uses the Mark 41 vertical launch system to launch interceptor missiles such as the SM-3 and SM-6. Aegis Ashore launchers are currently present in Poland and Romania. But as evident, the Mark 41 vertical launch system can be used to fire purely offensive missiles. Also, a variant of the new missile could be developed that may carry nuclear warhead in the future. Russia has called the presence of Mark 41 launchers in Europe as a violation of the treaty. This is where the new American missile will be useful. The U.S. government's 2018 Nuclear Posture Review NPR, pointed to the fact that Russia is lowering its threshold for using low-yield nuclear weapons in wartime and warned that the U.S. must move to match this capability. The NPR stated, Russia's belief that limited nuclear first use potentially including low-yield weapons, can provide such an advantage is based in part on Moscow's perception that its greater number and variety of non-strategic nuclear systems provide a coercive advantage in crises and at lower levels of conflict. This is where the new American weapons will be useful. In that situation, just like Russia will have a way to strike Europe, the U.S. will have a way to strike Russia from Europe. This will mean both sides will be back on the same situation which had led to the INF Treaty in the first place. And it will actually be worse, as they'll have nukes that have lower usage threshold. Since the distance between Russia and Western Europe is very small, both parties will have very little time to react in case a missile launch is triggered. This is bound to complicate the security situation. It's clear that with the end of the INF Treaty, the probability of nuclear conflict has increased significantly. Russia blamed the Trump administration for the collapse of the INF Treaty and warned of a potential new arms race. 
President Vladimir Putin called on the U.S. to resume nuclear talks so that the strategic stability could be safeguarded. Putin said in a Kremlin statement on August 5, the demise of the INF has created fundamental risks for everyone. He suggested a return to common sense in international security policy. President Trump recently stated that his administration has been discussing with Russia about a pact for nuclear weapons so that they get rid of some, we get rid of some. He also added, we'd certainly have to include China at some point. It remains to be seen if a new treaty comes into place. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.